believing in what we're doing, and I promise you, this won't be the last one. Let's go, Matt. Here we go. Nice, all three. One, two, three. Nice. Nice. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and Titans football with Brian Callahan presented by SeatGeek. I'm Mike Keith. Titans are back home from Miami, a 31 to 12 winner. Let's bring in the head coach after his first victory. And joining us is Brian Callahan. Congratulations. I Thank know you. you've gotten that yeah. a lot We've, in the last 20 or so hours. Well, we finally got, got one. Uh, we got one in the win column and uh, that goes a long way for us to Finally feel like the work is validated and a little bit of positive energy going into the bye week. Let's jump right into it and take a look at what happened. We normally call this the Sunday game experience, but just for kicks, we'll call it the Monday game experience. Levis and the Titans are back at Hard Rock Stadium looking for more Monday night magic. Tennessee is looking for its first win in the 2024 season. Let's get a win. Titans on three. One, two, three. Right, right, sir. Why not us? Yes, sir. Let's be the best in the world today. Let's go. Monday night. Take this out. Come on. Go, on three. One, two, three. Right. And here we go. Monday night football. Huntley looking. Sack! Harold Landry. Kick on. From 53, <laughs> snap, set, kick on the way. Good. The Titans at the half. Nine, the Dolphins three. We're going to give it to Pollard, patiently running. Here he goes, 40, 30, Pollard 20, Pollard 10, and Pollard will be taken out of bounds. Spears around right in. There's nobody there. Just the green, green grass of the end zone. Touchdown, Titans! Snap is good. Hunt is away. Knuckleball. Barrios going to let it go. It checks, and the Titans. Brown will down it at the seven. Huntley. Rolls out to his right. He's under pressure. Throws it away in the end zone. Attention is rounding. Give Pollard around right in, trying to score. Pollard dives. He's in there! <laughs> Touchdown, <laughs> Titans! Oh, yes. The 30-point streak <laughs> is yes. broken! Brian Callahan has his first win as Tennessee Titans head coach. Oh, man. Uh, fantastic. Just a chance to get a win on Monday Night Football. Needed it bad. with many more to come. Yeah. Hey, fellas, it feels good, man. It feels good. I I'm proud of the effort. We knew what type of game it was going to be. It was going to be physical. It was going to be bloody. You guys set the tone. And look, there's more to come now. That ain't it. That ain't it. So I appreciate your effort. I'm proud of you guys, man. You guys deserved it. You work your ass off. You practice off. You've deserved to win for a bunch of weeks now, and we finally got it done. We're going to keep rolling. Keep believing in each other. Keep believing in what we're doing. And I promise you, this won't be the last one. Titans on three. One, one two, two, three, Titans! That is a happy Monday game experience and a 31 to 12 win. Everything you set out for your offense, your defense, and your special teams, you check nearly every box. That's how you win. Uh, they, they followed the game plan exactly the way we had laid it out. We knew what type of game it was going to be, uh, what we would need from all three phases, the things that they had to do within those phases to get the job done, and they really did almost everything that we set out to do, and, and the result was, uh, was a really nice win on Monday Night Football on the road, and those are hard to come by. All right, let's get Callahan on three topics. Topic number one has to be Nick Folk, right? Nick Folk, the guy you played against in college. And <laughs> yeah. Five of five on the field goals, and he just keeps right on rolling. He, uh, he's been uh, the model of consistency, and his ability uh, to make some big kicks with three over 50 yards, uh, five total in a game where points were, were at a premium, especially early on. Uh, I love everything about his consistency. He's been fantastic. 
Folk on fire, we say it. Miami matched his career high. The five field goals, 53, 52, 47, 51, and 29. Since he's been a Titan, 36 of 37. And the oldest kicker to make three 50-plus yard field goals in a game. Oh, I didn't know that. Good yeah, how about that? Good for him. He's very, very consistent. And that's what you need as a kicker. You need points when you got him available, and, and he knocks it through every time. And in that ball game, you could just tell every one of those field goals was going to make a difference because it was just this battle. You had to go to your backup quarterback, Mason Rudolph, yeah. 9 of 17 overall, 85 yards, and got you home to the victory. Yeah, what was great about Mason was his professionalism. To be able to step in in that spot, operate, um, we didn't have to put a lot on him uh, because our, our run game carried the load for a lot of that second half in particular, and it was really, really well done by him. And, and again, the professionalism, the ability, the calmness, the poise to step in and execute and operate the offense um, was really good to see for Mason. And that's why we signed him, uh, because we believe that he'd be able to help us in these particular spots. And he did a really nice job. You reiterated that Will Levis is your quarterback when he's healthy. You feel good about Will, where Will's going to be post by? As of right now, I do. And uh, again, there's there's more to information to be had. But I think as of right now, I feel comfortable uh, where we're at and, and where we should be by the time we come play Indianapolis in, uh, in two weekends. And the Titans continued to do good things in the defensive line, even without Jeffrey Simmons. Let's start with Tavondre Sweat. Man, big sweat. He, um, <laughs> he was a force. And he's played really well this year so far. Been disruptive, been active, made, made it hard to run the football. And then he showed up in a big way uh, last night. Played a little bit different spots because of Jeff's absence. Played some more of the three technique than he did as, as the nose. Um, but really was an impressive, impressive outing for Big Sweat. Six tackles overall, two tackles for loss, but maybe most impressively, played over 80% of the defensive snaps. Yeah, it looked like he's in shape, and uh, that was the big question mark about him. And he's done he's done such a good job of, of being where he's supposed to be, being accountable uh, to making sure his weight's right, being accountable to his conditioning. And the more, more he's played, the more comfortable he's gotten. And uh, I think you see the, his ability to be a force uh, in the NFL for a long time. And then number 69, Sebastian Joseph Day, also with six tackles and a quarterback sack. Stepped up in a big way. Again, another one of those guys that has been uh, an addition to our team that has been one of underrated additions and continues to make plays and uh, stepped up again with the absence of Jeff and, and made it life really hard on Miami to run the football. All right, coming up, we're going to get some Titans tape. We're going to look at that super play at the end of the first half that got the Titans three points. Stay with us for more Titans football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek. In the Titans 31-12 win at Miami last night, a great play at the end of the first half. 16 seconds to go, Titans with the ball at their own 44. And here we go, Brian Callahan. How did oh, you get in field goal range? Man, this was this was an unbelievable execution situationally by our team with 16 seconds. This might be the new land speed record for this particular play in a down-down clock situation. 16 seconds left. We call a play. We call a triple in. So we have a short uh, basic there, a 25-yard in route by Tyler, and a 16-yard in route here, and a clear by Hop on the backside. And the intent is to try to hit this one for a chunk. They get a three-man rush, so we basically get three double teams on three rushers, so we have all day to let it develop, and Mason delivers a great ball to Tyler right, in that spot. So what happens now is the key part. As soon as they know in the huddle, we catch this ball. Tyler goes down, and we are in a clock situation immediately. And you can see the speed that our guys operate with to get this clocked in 16 seconds with one second left to get a field goal was really, really incredible. And you'll see the back of the play here as we run up. As soon as the ball is complete, they transition, and these guys are sprinting up to look at how fast they're all going. Tyler's running in as fast as he can. They're all down there, and we get a chance to clock the ball with one second left to score a field goal. I mean, pristine situational execution by the entire offense. And you'll see, if you saw the actual clock play, how excited Tyler and, and Calvin were that we executed that and got ourselves three points. Uh, really, it's an unbelievable execution in the moment. Most really impressive by Mason Rudolph, making sure everybody's set. No doubt. Taking all the time he There's possibly no can to make sure that everybody's ready to go because you can't get a penalty there or else there's no field goal try. No. Here's the throw and one more time. 
It's wow. accurate. It's on they come. Look how fast everybody I mean, down it's there. Like you it. see, <laughs> and you see there, I guess, if they flip yeah. it. But that last play, I mean, to get three seconds, unbelievable, unbelievable work by those guys in that, in that spot. Again, the land speed record at 16 seconds, I don't think I've ever seen it that fast. All right, you're going to see something fast in the next segment. Seat Geek Sound. Brian Callahan is involved. He doesn't know this. Oh, what? You didn't tell me well, this. Well, we won. We're going to have oh, some fun. You got a surprise. That's huh? next on Titans Football with Brian Callahan, presented by Seat Geek. Stay tuned. You're back in the Vet MGM studio for Titans Football with Brian Callahan. All right. When Brian Callahan hired Nick Holtz as offensive coordinator, many fans might not have realized their long history together. But seeing the two on the field, it doesn't take very long to see the chemistry. Enjoy the Seat Geek sound. Oh, yeah, it's hot here in September. September? Jets game? Yeah. Oh, you got my up. Got it. No, really? Tell people, bro. You just assume I'm mic'd up on a day like today. You guys are thieves. You can't do that. You can't do that to people. Is that right there? Yeah. The other one I, want, there. I want to be the first. I want to be the first guy to say nothing and coach zero players on a mic'd up. You're doubling down on the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I, I heard about you. I'm just telling you. I'm gonna get somebody today. You better keep that between us. So you go to De La Salle with Brian Callahan. I did. I know you never thought, well, Brian's going to be an NFL head coach and I'll be his offensive coordinator. I'm sure that never crossed your mind. While it is probably somewhat surprising, is it maybe not shocking that it's happened? Brian always had a presence and a seriousness to him. He was going to do something. Yeah, he was going to be, whatever he chose to do, he was going to be successful. Did I think he was going to be the head coach of the Tennessee Titans or some other NFL team? I can't say I had it totally dialed, but I think if you asked everybody around us that age he was just had a level of maturity i think that most of us did i said as long as you're jesus what did you play no it's on you there you go there it is oh no question for you yes you uh you play football right three more catches than you have you know what i didn't let the play before affect the next one but short-term memory <laughs> you went to high school with Nick Holtz. Uh, he's a lot of fun. He's a good football coach, but he is a lot of fun, and clearly he makes the job fun for you and for everybody else. Yeah, it's a really – him and I have a really unique relationship, and his ability to, to keep me humble, uh, he's had it for a long time. Uh, we've known each other, obviously, since we were about 14 years old, and – there's a lot of fun that we get to have together doing this job together every day. Um, he is a fantastic football coach. Uh, he has been unbelievable for me uh, in the organization of the offense. But, uh, yeah, the high school pictures are <laughs> – I wasn't ready for that. Well, today. we figured uh, we could bring them out tonight. That was great. All that right. Was great. The Epic Western Genuine article is next. We're talking numbers with a lady who knows what they mean better than anybody. The numbers behind the X's and O's next on Titans Football with Brian Callahan. Titans president of football operations, Chad Brinker, spent the last year growing the team's football research and development department. In tonight's epic Western genuine article, our Amy Wells introduces us to Sarah Bailey, who Chad Brinker has brought on to give the team a competitive advantage across the organization. A little over a year ago when, I, when, when we got here, um, one of the the tasks that I've been given was to, to build an analytics department from, from ground up. And when I started to, to, to research uh, in, the, in the community of you know, who, who would I like to, to bring into our organization, there's a name that kept popping up for me, and that name was Sarah Bailey. Sarah Bailey's path to the Tennessee Titans was not a straight line. 
That might be frustrating to someone who likes order and finding patterns in what appear to be random data points. I had a math degree. I got an internship with the San Diego Chargers at the time, but I was doing digital media analytics. I kept being like, oh, I'd love to be in the football side. I'd love to be in the football side. So I went back to school. I got my master's in stats, and then I just saw a job posting for the Rams. So I was working with their uh, medical staff and their trainers and looking at injury prevention and how to um, limit risk on players and optimize performance. All of that experience makes Bailey uniquely qualified for a career in research and analytics. You know, I was really looking for someone with a really strong mathematics background, but also that had experience in the National Football League. That's what makes Bailey a great fit as the Director of Football Research and Development. She's seen it all. She's she just got a, a unique skill set. Probably about midway through the interview, I remember looking at Rand Carthon thinking, this is going to be our person right here, Sarah Bailey. She blew us away, and it was a no-brainer. This is only the beginning for a group that continues to grow and evolve. There's the coaching piece. Uh, there's a lot that goes into the coaching piece. There's also the, 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 the area of personnel, and, and that's where you see the draft predictions come in. That's where you see the performance predictions come in. Like, I love the draft, but I also think like when I start doing other things, I'm like, oh, I love this. Like I'm working on a lot of coaching stuff right now, and it's like, this is so interesting. So. For me personally, I just, I love it all. During the off season, the research and development team added two people in Aaron Seidel Davis and Alex Rogers. You know, Sarah is, is, is building out uh, a small team there to kind of help uh, support our coaching staff on, on a lot of different fronts. We sort of have two uh, pillars in our staff. So one is like football information and then there's like research and development, that's sort of me. This gives Bailey and her group the opportunity to find new and innovative ways to help the Tennessee Titans gain the extra edge on Sundays. Brian, when you break down analytics towards what you use them for, especially with the offense, how important is this new sports science in coaching, game planning, everything that goes into it? It matters a lot. There's a, there's a lot of information that can be uh, used, digested, applied uh, to the process in the game planning process, tendencies, tendency breakers. There's just so much information now and there's so many things that lead to winning um, that can be quantified uh, with data and to know what those markers are and to know how they fit and to know how to use it uh, is really critically important nowadays in, in today's NFL and thankfully we have someone like Sarah and her team heading all those things up and finding out where we can where we can gain an edge. And that's all this game is about. Everything's equal. Talent is equal. Uh, and, and where do you find your edge? And right now in the NFL, that's the that's the cutting edge of um, winning in the NFL is, is how well you use the information and the data that's uh, being analyzed and presented. Welcome you back to the Bet MGM studio and Titans football with Brian Callahan. Time for Callahan's first look presented by Nissan. Let's go with things to build on through the bye and a better offensive line performance in Miami. Something to build on? Absolutely. Ran the ball well. We were physical. We moved the line of scrimmage. It was a gutty game for our guys up front and they performed really well. And I was really happy with uh, and pleased with their performance. It was something I think we can definitely build on when it comes to running the football. Just gave up one sack in the ball game last night in Miami. Red zone offense, three trips, two touchdowns. That's where you want to be, 67 to 75, 80% on touchdowns when you get inside the other team's 20. Yeah, you got to score touchdowns to win games. You want to score 30 points in a game, you got to score touchdowns down there, and that's uh, what, what our goal is. And if you can come out in that high 60s to low 70s range, uh, you're going to win a lot of football games. And, and the more you can score those touchdowns and not kick field goals and get those four-point plays, that's that's where you make that's where you make your money down there. I like the Tajay Spears and the Wildcat, by the way. Well, maybe there's more I, where, that, maybe I, there's I, more where I, that's coming from. I bet he likes it, too. Okay, and then finally, build on creating more turnovers. You got the first one for the defense last night right here. Well, that's... That's the name of the game right now. We're, we're, uh, we're still not where we want to be in turnover margin. We turn the ball over too many times, but the other part of it is you got to take it away, and we have to do a better job of that. Um, it's going to put us in better position to win football games moving forward and uh, getting our first one. They come in bunches, as they say, so hopefully there's, there's more on the horizon for us uh, in a turnover game on defense. Callahan's first look presented by Nissan. Uh, as we wrap this thing up, so good to be talking to you after a win 
the feeling here at Ascension St. Thomas yeah. Sports Park, the feeling talking to Titans fans, getting coffee this morning. Uh, the air's a lot better after a win. It helps everything. Yeah, the sky's a little bluer and uh, the sun shines a little brighter. But yeah, it's it's a great feeling and we got to build on it and keep it going. Congratulations again. Thank you. Remind you that the Titans are off this weekend, but in 12 days back home at Nissan Stadium, AFC South battle with the Colts. For Brian Callahan, Mike Keith says thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.